The Miami Heat just came off a pretty disappointing offseason, losing a couple of key players who played a vital role in their finals run last year, then not being able to finalize a deal with the Portland Trailblazers to acquire Damian Lillard. But so far this year, the Heat have remained extremely competitive in the East, and the play of rookie Jaime Jaquez has been a huge part of Miami's early success. Now coming into his rookie year, Jaime already has four years of college experience, and you can for sure see the effect of that on the court. Jaquez has an elite basketball feel, having a good understanding of space and defensive gravity, which allows him to generate easy buckets each game by simply cutting into open space. On this play, you'll see the ball get kicked out to the wing, then driven towards the baseline. But as all that's happening, notice how Hame here is going to fill into this open space, which both gives his teammate a window to make this pass, but also puts Hame in front of the weak side defense, allowing him to easily catch and finish. I also think Hakez is really good at timing his cuts. Whenever he's on the weak side of the floor and his man overcommits in help, Jaquez is going to immediately cut into that open space. And these are reads that just simply come from reading the defense. Right here, watch how LaMelo Ball is going to slide across the paint to help on Bam who's posting up. But again, this gives Jaquez all this open space to cut into. This read right here is low-key crazy where Kyle Lowry and Bam here are playing in pick and roll, and notice how this defender just slightly falls asleep ball watching. And before Lowry even comes off the screen, Jaquez is going to blast into a backdoor cut. And the timing on this cut is flawless, because as soon as Lowry completely turns the corner off the screen, Jaquez has already committed to his cut, making himself open at the exact moment Lowry comes off. You'll see more of that perfect timing on this play, where Lowry's not playing with the ball in transition, and before he picks up his dribble, watch how Hawkins here is already committed to a cut, and he creeps behind Anthony Edwards for another layup. Now physically, Hawkins is also a stocky 6'7 wing, which can make him a matchup problem against smaller lineups. You'll see him here matched up against DeJounte Murray. And notice how Murray tries to slide up in front Hawkins, but in response, Jaime is going to slightly push Murray up to the elbow to create enough room behind him for this lob pass. Another thing that stands out with Hawkins' post game is how patient he is. Before he fully commits to a move, you'll notice how he's constantly reading the floor to see what exact options he has. Like on this play. Watch how Hakez simply turns and scans the floor, and when this space in the middle opens up, Hame is going to attack right into that open space with no hesitation, which then gives him enough room to spin back to his right for the end one. When playing in the pose, Hakez also has pretty good touch, with these short 10 foot turnaround jumpers, and because he has a solid 230 frame, he's able to stay on balance while getting these shots off. Watch him here throw all his weight into the defense, then turn over his right shoulder for a rhythm jumper. And then Hawkins' favorite counter to this move is just your standard shot fake, which may not be super dynamic or flashy, but it is one of the most effective moves in the book. First quarter including 5 of 7 from 3. Oh sweet move by Hawkins! Now that patience that Hawkins has in the post also makes him a pretty effective playmaker from these spots. You'll see him on this play, read Bobby Portis slide across the paint. So in response, Hakez is going to whip a one-hand pass out to the opposite corner to set up an open three. Throughout this season, Miami has also been running some Golden State style split actions, with Hami as the one initiating the offense from the post. Right here, you'll again see Hakez catch the ball down low, and watch how Bam is going to come across and set this flitter screen for Duncan Robinson and Duncan is able to curl all the way around to pick up some momentum and catch into a finish. Now in Miami's offense, Hawkins also gets a good amount of catch and shoot threes, and so far this year he's shooting a pretty accurate 38% from behind the line, and these shots typically find him in the flow of the game, or off the gravity of Miami's playmakers. Now it is pretty important to note that Hawkins right now is not the most dynamic 3 point shooter, as of this recording, Jaime is shooting below 28% on contested threes, compared to 42% on all his wide open looks. And when looking at the film, it is pretty apparent that when Hawkins is sped up into an outside shot, that his accuracy does take a pretty big nosedive. 
But what I think is most important is that Hame is still a good enough outside shooter that the defense can't afford to leave him open, which then opens up closeouts for him to attack. On the perimeter, Hakez has a sneaky first step, and he's great at reading angles on closeouts. Watch him here catch with a split stance, to then attack right into Austin Reeves' gravity off the catch. Look at this play. You'll see Hakez here fill into the corner to create an angle for this pass, and watch how he slightly pauses to let Duncan Robinson cut out, to then re-attack towards the baseline. I love this play, where we have Jimmy Butler here playing in pick and roll, with Hakez spotting up on the wing. And as Butler starts working off the screen, notice how deep Hakez's man is sitting in gap. So in response, Jaime is going to pick up ahead of steam and run through this pass to attack right into this gap. On the perimeter, Hakez also has a pretty good feel of making these quick and simple extra passes, which is huge for both keeping the defense in rotation and giving Miami high quality looks. Watch Hakez here cut into open space. Then right when he catches and feels Horford on him, he immediately knows where the next pass is, and he turns right into a kick out to the corner. Now even if Hakez doesn't get an immediate advantage off the catch, he still has good enough skills with the ball to get downhill. On this play, you'll see Jaime going at the set defender, and watch him float up and punch him in and out to create this right hand drive. This move here is also pretty tough, where off a live dribble, Hakez is going to go behind the back and drop his shoulder to attack Josh Hart's top foot. Then when he gets hard to open up his hips trying to recover, Jaime is going to take an aggressive pound dribble and spin back towards the middle. Now when playing downhill, Hakez is also an extremely physical driver. You'll see him here get by Jordan Poole, then watch how he throws himself right into the shot blocker's body to completely knock him back and draw the end one. So because Hakez is a pretty competent ball handler, the Heat at times will let him play with the ball and pick and roll, and this is where his playmaking chops really begin to show. First, Hakez's size allows him to see playmaking windows over the defense, and he is pretty accurate with these lob passes. Hakez, lob. Hakez is also getting pretty comfortable reading the second and third defender on the weak side of the floor. On this play, you'll see him read this defender tagging the roller. So in response, Hakez is going to zip the skip pass out to the corner, which creates a closeout for Duncan Robinson to attack. So offensively, Hakez is a pretty versatile player. He's got the ability to score and create offense off the ball. The Heat can use him as a post hub to run offense through, and they can also put the ball in his hands, and use him as their primary ball handler if need be. And those wide array of skills allow Hawkins to fit in with pretty much any lineup that Eric Spolstra decides to go with. So as the year goes on, I do see Jaime Hawkins' role slowly becoming more and more vital to the Miami Heat success. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe to the channel. The kids here.